We continue to expand our knowledge about the role of our bank in our business's books as I'm going to introduce you to Sage Bank Reconciliations in this video. In my previous videos, I've shown the various ways of getting the bank transactions into the SAIDS accounting system. And then we looked at how to deal with the categorization and allocation of bank receipts and bank payments. Our next and final step concerning bank transactions in our books is to ensure its accuracy by performing a bank reconciliation. I'm going to introduce you to a simple and easy way of doing bank reconciliations with SAIDS reinforcing why SAGE is so highly regarded because the SAGE version I am using makes bank reconciliations a breeze and very easy to do, removing technicalities and accounting jargon. Are you ready for this? Let's begin. What is a bank reconciliation? In layman's terms, a bank reconciliation is the process of comparing data on cash books with the corresponding data on the bank statements. According to SAGE, the purpose of a bank reconciliation is to make sure the transactions entered in accounting match the transactions on your bank statement. This makes sure that your bank balance is correct. Why must your bank balance be correct? Because for most businesses, the bank is where the money flow is gathered and monitored, and accountants want to account for every cent. If the recording of your bank transactions are 100% accurate, then the reports generated are reliable, and you have achieved a major advancement in the management of that business. When you made the payment or received the money, the bank transaction details have been recorded, and the work of generating transaction records has already been performed by the bank. It is a waste of time to manually write up books or recapture any bank transaction on an accounting system from the bank statements because the data file already exists and it is with the bank. We merely have to take this data that belongs to us and transfer it to us. We can do the transfer by importing data either automatically with direct bank feeds or bulk imports of bank transactions that potentially only take a couple of minutes. Here is where bank reconciliations come to play, because glitches can still happen with data transfers via the internet. Sometimes transactions are duplicated. Sometimes it is corrupted. Data transfers are not perfect, but it is still damn reliable and fast. You only have to deal with a few exceptions to the rule. A bank reconciliation for me these days is a fast check, where I confirm bank's data for validity, accuracy and completeness. Let's start for beginners with a basic small bank reconciliation of a net cash account containing only a few transactions, but it's an example of a real bank account of a real business. To orientate yourself and to determine the dates that you want to reconcile to, open your bank statement, like I have done here with this net cash statement. Have a look at the dates. Most bank reconciliations are performed for the last day of the month. But if you think about it, it does not have to be only for month ends. The reason is that if your bank reconciles at mid-month, it means that the previous month's end must be in balance. In this case, I'm going to perform a bank reconciliation on the 13th of May, as most of the transactions happen at the beginning of the month, and I would like to send statements to customers that reflect those transactions. For that, I need to be sure of the accuracy of the bank balance for the date of the statements, which is the 13th of May. The next step is to make a note of the bank balance, because you are going to need it later. Don't worry, it will become clear soon. I'm going to copy the balance amount of 4,301 Rand and 49 cents. I am locked in at the Sage workspace and I'm going down to the Reconcile Bank Statement widget 
that will take me directly to where I need to be. At the Reconcile Banks and Credit Cards screen, in the Bank Account field, I'm going to navigate to the Netcash Bank Account. The balance under the Bank Account name is the balance of the bank according to my sage books for the two date. My first step is to get the correct date of the bank reconciliation. My reconciliation balance date is from the 1st of April to the 13th of May, which I select in the to date field. This message from Sage to save the changes comes up with each change you make on the screen. Just be aware of that. Naturally, I'm going to click on Yes. As a refresher, I am quickly going back to the bank statement and copy the balance from the statement to the field next to the statement balance. Already I am happy because the computer balance agrees to the statement balance. But there is a but, unfortunately. And if you look at the bottom of the reconciliation totals, you will see that there is a difference. In the middle of the screen, in the transaction grid, two transactions are reflected. These are the transactions that were imported to the site's accounting system, but not yet ticked or marked as agreed with the bank statement. I know since my two balance amounts at the top agree that if I marked these transactions as reconciled, that the difference will be zero at the bottom. Before you save your work, first print the reconciliation because if you click on save, Sage will direct you away from the screen without the option to print your reconciliation and you will have to do the process again if you want a saved copy or a print copy. Now let's view the Sage Accounting Bank Reconciliation Report. The report is beautifully laid out with the bank account name, closing balance per bank statement, less outstanding payment. This is relevant where check payments are made and only reflected in the bank after a number of days. With a live accounting system, I do not encounter this often. I still find it with credit cards, transactions, uh, for some other reason. Same with outstanding receipts, where a receipt is being captured, but only cleared by the bank later. Making the sum of the above three gives you the reconciled bank balance which is compared to the computer bank balance at the date of the reconciliation. The difference must always be zero, otherwise there is an error. I think it is important to save this report in a monthly management pack for the following reasons. As proof that the function was performed correctly. As proof that accounting records in the reports can be trusted, as proof for internal management overseeing your work, as proof for external auditors like revenue tax services. The last step of the bank reconciliation process is to save it. This is it, a simple example of a bank reconciliation in Sage Accounting. When you are directed back to the dashboard screen, note the banking widget that gives a graphical presentation of the bank balance movement. For a business owner, this is a helpful feature to make an immediate mental connection with the cash flow and bank balance of the business. Well, this was the start of our banking reconciliations journey. Join me in future videos where I'm going to troubleshoot obstacles and hiccups that I encounter with various bank reconciliations. I'm going to show you how to deal with them so that you can learn from my experience and have a good reference to come back to in case you get stuck with your bank reconciliations. Thanks for watching. See you soon.